Here I've got a nice problem that was suggested by The Good Place to Stop, and it comes from the 2017 Mathematical Duel. And I think it's a pretty cool functional equation problem. So our goal is to determine all functions from R to R. So in other words, the inputs are real numbers and the outputs are real numbers, satisfying two conditions. First, the image of f is a finite set. So in other words, this function f only takes on a finite number of values or has only a finite number of outputs. Then our second condition is for all x real numbers, f of x plus one equals two times f of x plus one. I think probably a good strategy here is to guess a fairly simple solution and show that is the only solution. And in order to find the fairly simple solution, we'll look at the simplest case of the image being finite, and that would be the image only being one value. But if that image is only one value, then we've got an equation for that value right here. Okay, so let's suppose that the image is only one value and that value is y. So that tells us that y equals 2 times y plus 1 after plugging into that equation. So let's maybe like doctor this up a little bit so we have all of the details. So we're first assuming that this only takes on one value just to see if we can get an example function out of the way. And then we'll show that that function is indeed the only one. Okay, but this is a really easy linear equation to solve. That gives us y equals minus one. So what have we done so far? So, so far we have shown that the constant function f of x equals minus one satisfies I'll just call them the rules, where these are the two rules over here. In other words, we found it, at least one function. So now let's show that that is the only function. So let's make that the claim. This is the only function. And how can we prove this claim? Well, we'll prove it by way of contradiction. In other words, we'll suppose that we have a function which is not identically equal to minus one that satisfies this rule, but then we'll show that something goes wrong. But that's equivalent to saying that we have a real number a such that f evaluated at a is not equal to negative one. So I'll set that equal to b. So any function which is not identically equal to minus one takes on a value which is not equal to minus one somewhere. We're just calling that somewhere this point A. And now let's run through this rule a couple of times to see if we can get some structure built into these outputs. So I'll just copy this over. We have f of A is B, then f of A plus one will be equal to 2 times f of a plus 1, in other words, 2b plus 1. Then f of a plus 2, well that's 2 times f of a plus 1 plus 1, applying this rule again where x is a plus 1. But let's notice that that is 4a plus 3. Then for good measure, let's apply it again, f of a plus three, that's two times f of a plus two plus one, and we'll see that we get eight a plus seven. And that brings us to the following claim, which is inside of this proof, as to the structure of f of a plus something. So we have f of a plus n is equal to two to the n times b plus, 2 to the n minus 1. And we can see that structure arriving at each of these steps. And how could we prove this claim? Well, maybe we'll do it by induction. Notice that our base case is already done just in our calculation that's happening right here. So let's say that we have an induction hypothesis. So suppose this is true for some k bigger than or equal to one. And then we'll look at f of a plus k plus one. So we know that that is equal to two times f of a plus k 
plus one, but that is two times two to the k times b plus two to the k minus one plus one. Okay, but that's shaping up to be exactly what we want. This is clearly equal to two to the k plus one times b plus two to the k plus one minus two plus one, so that'll be minus one. So indeed, this function satisfies this rule. Okay, so let's bring this rule over here and then we'll show that this will cause an issue towards our original assumption. So towards showing that this constant function is the only solution to this functional equation setup, we've arrived with the following data. So if we have a function that takes on a value which is not equal to minus one, let's say it takes on the value b at a, then for all natural numbers n, so I'll add that in here, we have f of a plus n equals 2 to the n times b plus 2 to the n minus 1. Now we haven't applied this finite condition yet, so let's apply that finite condition. So this finiteness condition implies that there exists m, which are not equal to n, both natural numbers, such that f of a plus m equals f of a plus n. And that's because otherwise this thing would take on infinitely many different values, but that's one of the assumptions that we're making is that it does not take on infinitely many values. Okay, so now let's apply this rule and see that we get 2 to the m times b plus 2 to the m equals 2 to the n times b plus 2 to the n. Obviously, both of these have a minus 1, but I can just cancel those out. Okay, so now let's move all of the b's to one side of the equation and everything else to the other side of the equation. That'll leave us with something like 2 to the m minus 2 to the n times b, moving this over here, equals 2 to the n minus 2 to the m. But now our assumption is that m is not equal to n, but that means that this is not equal to zero. I think we can assume that this exponential function two to some power is injective, which is essentially what we're using here. But that means we can divide both sides by that. But notice over here on the right hand side, we have negative this term. So that tells us that we have b equals minus one. But that's a contradiction towards this original assumption that our function took on a value which was not equal to minus one. So if that is contradicted, then our function cannot take on any value which is not equal to minus one. So that means the only function which satisfies our functional equation setup with this finite condi finiteness condition is the constant function f of x equals minus one. And that's a good place to stop.